actually. I haven't brushed. <laughs> I haven't brushed my hair today. <laughs> I got up early. I got ready. I still got my work glasses. You take me as I am. <laughs> I was like, I will brush my hair, and I was like, I can't actually be asked. <laughs> Hi, Tammy. <laughs> it's um. Oh. Right. So. Not as many of you are here right now because I know it's sunny out, but me and Stace wanting to get together and talk about like shit really. Just talk about a load of shit that we've kind of been through and I know a lot of people have sort of been through and uh, one thing that I found when I spoke to Stace the last few weeks is like you're an amazing female, like you're an amazing woman and you've really inspired me to get my shit together even more, if I'm really honest, which has been really, really nice. So, the thing thing that I was wanting to talk about is um, a lot of, well, for me particularly, the thought of being on my own and not being with someone in my 30s was almost like going against society's norm of you need to be married by this age, have babies by this age, and and live your life this way and blah 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 and then obviously lockdown happened and I was like I'm totally on my own nobody's gonna love me nobody's gonna want me and talking to you Stace really helped me calm myself down as well and it's been an amazing experience for me in lockdown and I wanted to say thank you as well for taking the time to sort of talk to me about things as well because it's really made a big difference yeah, you're very welcome. It's not like you don't need to thank me speaking to you. And you're having that conversation. But out of curiosity, what's so you said certain things have made you sort of you've got some stuff together and stuff. What do you think you sort of accomplished in that sense in lockdown? I don't think it's an I think one thing that I learn I've learned about myself in lockdown is the fact that before lockdown I was keeping myself so busy um to not be on my own so rather than finishing like a normal human and be like right my end of the day is done I would then continue my day to avoid being at home on my own and being alone and then I'd get home from work really late maybe 9 30 10 at night stick the tv on once the tv was on then that would distract me from the fact that I'm then at home on my own so I'm sort of pottering around doing my normal shit and then I'm so exhausted at this point when really what I should have done was finished work and gone home like a normal person would do and um, have some dinner and go to bed or chill at home. But instead, I'm literally getting home late at night, making sure I work really, really late hours and then just keep myself busy and then not actually find out who the fuck I am anymore because I'm just staying really, really busy and I'm actually exhausting myself being really busy rather than taking time out to actually be okay with being on my own yeah it just comes like robotic so you just kind of get up do what you got to do go to bed and you kind of don't you fear having that time because when you get that time what are you going to do like you're kind of in your own head I guess so yeah everyone avoids that where at some stage I think like if you're going for a sad time or a bad time you you sort of fear that being alone because that's when your head kind of plays games or, you know, overthinks. And then because that happens, you fear that again. So you're like, well, if I'm on my own, I'm just going to be back there again. But yeah. it's the more, guys, the more you're on your own, you actually don't get into that circle and that sort of learn to, or you having that kind of actually helps because you kind of think over stuff so much, right? And then you kind of get your own answers and stuff like that. So it doesn't become as you think. Yeah. But I think something but scared about it. I've worried it for so long that becomes your new norm and then that's tiring as well it's really draining pretending to be busy and not to be busy when half the time just stopping and giving yourself some time would be the better thing completely yeah and that's what's been really amazing actually having this time is that it's not that bad at all. And actually, the thought of then going back to work now, it, like eventually when we do come out of lockdown, I don't want to work till 8, 9 o'clock at night anymore. I can I can actually be, like, okay coming home and getting into a routine and thinking I can end my day that way rather than thinking I have to keep busy, busy, busy because I don't want to I don't wanna have that time, that downtime. But actually, it's exactly what I needed. But you'll, you'll probably find as well, like, when you go back to some kind of, new normality I guess like 
now you're kind of just used to it as we're uncomfortable with it but you actually start to look forward to it because once you start having to be in that busy cycle again and then you know you're okay being on your own you quite like it for whatever things you start to do on your own now and quality time you'll start to think actually i'm gonna have wednesdays maybe i'll finish a bit earlier because i can go home and do that and you'll start to like look forward to that time on your own yeah and well, i think one thing is as well like we were talking the other day was you know, finding things to actually do outside that might think, if you don't want to be on your own, finding new things to do with people, or but going to them on your own might be really scary, but then that way you might find a whole new community. So, and some of the, I want the gyms to open. I just want the gyms to open. And that's it, like, for me, like, when the gym shut, I was like, oh my God, that's, you know, the gym is my work. The gym is my social life. The gym is my, you know, my gym is my everything. And when that got took away from me, that's where that sort of fear factor kicked in. But actually, I'm I'm still me, but I don't need a gym to sort of make like, keep me as a human. Like, I'm okay not having that in my life. But I think where I'm so used to being on that cycle of it that um, you can sort of take that time to sort of step away from it and realise that you don't need necessarily need that. I'll, I'll enjoy going back to the gym when I go back, but before I was like, I can't live without it. I have to, I have to be in a gym to, otherwise if I don't, if I'm not in the gym, I'm not talking to people, I'm not, I'm not living my life and I'm just a nothing. And that's generally how I felt. So when this lockdown was coming, it was like such a freak out for me because I was like, who am I without the gym? I, that yeah. that was literally the saddest little like that that was my little rock bottom before lockdown. And I was like, I don't actually know who I am about it, but but it's coming into this space now, and I'm like, you're still you, you're you've, you're still the same person, but you don't need the gym or something to distract yourself from all the time to sort of be in that headspace. Yeah, like that wasn't necessarily who you are. The gym didn't define you, but it was really easy to escape to. And a lot of people do do it. Like they will, I know. They go for a breakup, for example, and well, I'm going to go back to the gym. I'm going to feel good about myself, and then that's where they finish work, go to the gym, uh, free weekend, go to the gym, because you start to feel better a little bit, and then that becomes your life, and it can be really easy to do that. Same with a lot of things, but gym is the big one, I think, and because people tend to want to feel better in their skin, because that they think that will be the thing that makes them better and stuff. But you should just use it as a place to go, but then still be okay coming away from it as that's probably what your guess I guess you're learning. You don't need to live there and be solely there and not be scared to walk away from it and do other stuff and And that's the thing, like there is now that this sort of lockdown thing's happened, there's loads of stuff that I'm like, Oh my god, I really when I come out of lockdown, I really wanna do that and I really wanna go there and I really wanna see this and I really want whereas before I was like, No, nope, everything has to stay in that bubble and I have to be in that network and that's what makes me exist. And without that I'm I don't exist. And that's generally how I felt. So that's why it's been so eye-opening having this time to sort of still be me without thinking I'm that person with that. I'm, I'm my whole entity and I need to, I needed to realise that. So it's been really nice. Whether it lasts, I don't know. You know, you might go back into a routine and then go back to being that person. I don't know. I think to an extent it will because before where you was just purely sort of scared of that change, you aren't now and you know you can be okay but then you could go through a phase where you feel a bit low again you think right I can go to the gym and you escape in your house like sometimes if I felt a bit like trapped on a bad day I'd go to the gym because I could just escape the surroundings that you're in and it just breaks it up right so you probably still find you want to do that yeah just because you, know, you don't have that choice at the moment so you're just sort of becoming accustomed to not having that but when it opens again. It's a good place to just escape from the norm, but then you won't be scared of just stepping out of your comfort zone and stepping away from it, rather than that being your whole life. Yeah. And the people that everything in it is you. Do you know what I mean? And that's probably a big lesson. Yeah, it has. I, f I feel like this time's really taught me a lot, and it's it's made me realise that I don't need to rely on anyone or anything to make me feel okay. It has to come from me. But then another thing is as well is just okay. It's also okay to have like a shit day or a bit of a weird day, because you can't be. Even though this time's been amazing, it, I can't be happy all the time either. There's going to be different peaks and troughs, and you've got hormones and all that kind of shit floating around as well. But you're going to have ups and downs, and you're going to have times when you you know you're going to feel really happy, and you're going to have time. You might even have it in the same hour or the same day or the same week. But it's also okay 
to feel like that. Whereas before I'd be like, no, oh my God, it's the end of the world. I need to be with, be around people that's going to make me feel. And like, another thing I was doing was I was sleeping at my mum's at the weekends and I was sort of distracting myself so that I would just sort of just constantly be around people. But then I wouldn't even necessarily feel like I wanted to be there sometimes, but it was just like, I'd rather be there. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've definitely, I've gone through phases of that. And I think sometimes when you feel worse, like some people feel bad and they cut off and they don't want to be around people. But I actually think sometimes it's the bit of rest. If you put yourself around people when you're feeling like a low, which is why it's good like you touched on maybe branching out and trying new things and stuff when we spoke before because you're forced to like interact you're forced to get out of your comfort zone you're forced to laugh with someone says something's funny and do something so you actually you might not feel like you want to do them things but when you do they help you as well so like when you say oh, i just want to go and mum's not be on my own you think you're doing it because you feel shit but actually at the end of it you probably come away feeling better naturally yeah. than you would and that, that's the thing like I needed, that's the thing, there's nothing wrong with doing that. And I obviously needed to do that at that particular time. And I was like, oh my God, I'm like 34 going back to my mum's to sleep at hers to not to not deal with the fact that it's the weekend. And it's almost like you feel this social pressure that everyone else is probably out on a Friday or a Saturday night. And like, I don't like going out like that much anymore. I don't enjoy it. I don't want to be binge drinking. I don't want to be, especially if I've got... PT clients at eight in the morning or classes like you know like, I don't want to be you know I'm not 22 anymore when I used to roll in from a night out I'd go straight to work and then teach like a double spin and a body attack I don't know how the fuck I used to do that but you know that was it and I'd be doing that process whereas now and I'm like it's almost like you whereas now because of lockdown as well because nobody's in that situation I almost don't feel like any social pressure but I was like but it's given me that time to think why do you give a shit but it's like yeah. you're almost putting that pressure and you know people might be out but it doesn't mean they're necessarily having a good time or you don't know how they're feeling or you don't actually know what's going on in their lives they might be out thinking I'd rather be at home but they don't want to be at home or doing that thing or and a lot of the time you're just going through the motions so I'm like I've got that choice but I make that choice to not necessarily I don't want to I don't mean like, don't mean wrong. When I go out, like I commit, like if I'm going to go out drinking and I know I've got the day off work the next day, I'm a hundred percent. I'm there. Like I will be your, I'll be your girl and I'll happily get smashed and just get on with it. But I don't want to put myself in that situation anymore. But I almost felt guilty that I wasn't doing that because everyone else is kind of doing it. Yeah. No, I get that. But then in saying that, it's funny you said that because I've got a lot of friends that I know that don't love being on their own. So they go out, because it means they're not on their own, like sitting indoors, and they just get smashed because then that way they have to what what's going on. But then the next day, it all kicks in and gets worse because you get I love it anxiety. Everyone, I'm pretty sure every human's had it <laughs> when you wake up and it's worse. So in theory, going out when you're in a really bad place is probably the ultimate bad. That's horrendous. And then you're sitting there and you're thinking, why did I even go out or whatever? And then everyone else is getting really, really drunk around you. Like, they don't even know me. Like, they don't understand me. They don't know what's going on in my brain. And it, and like a lot of people might be like me. It takes me two days to recover now. So I might have had a bad day. I go out and I have a wicked time. But the day after, oh, my God, it's crap. And the day after that, oh, my God, it's crap. Like, so it takes me a lot longer to recover nowadays. So I have to pick and choose if I'm going out to have a bit of fun or I'm going out and I'm going all in. It's going to take me a good 48 hours to be good, good, good pace again. <laughs> but I think one thing that I've realised in, in, in this scenario is, like, I don't have to go out to get smashed to... Like, I have a great time if I do that, but I want to do things that I want to do. Like, yeah. I don't want to do things anymore that people expect me to do or people put... Not pressure, but, like, oh, come on, aim. Like, come on, it's it's this... Like, I don't like getting on public transport. I don't. I don't like getting on the trains. I don't like going into central. Like all my close friends know that, and like I don't enjoy doing it. But unfortunately, most of them will go in those areas because a lot of them live around there, and I don't expect them to come to my way because I'm in the yeah. sticks. But it's like, oh, if I don't do that, then I won't see them. But then I'm like, well, thinking about it now, if I want to see them, then I'll arrange and see them in a different environment and that's that's one thing that I've been thinking about is I don't want to why do I want to stress myself out getting somewhere and then it takes me nearly an hour and a half to get home it's late at night and then I get freaked out by like all the randoms on the trains because I'm that person as well and you always get some weirdo trying to talk to you on the train or something like that and you know 
No, it's, it's always like some weird, and I'm always the last stop. So there's no one else on your carriage apart from you and that person that seems to want to know you and walk. You know, I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to feel like that. I don't want to. But I was like, oh, I have to do that because, and that's one thing I said in when 2020 started, I was like, right, my new year's resolution was to be more brave and say yes to things. So what I thought I had to do was just say yes to all social situations and yes to everything. But realistically, no, being brave is also going against the grain and saying, I don't want to do that and being confident in your decision and trusting that if something doesn't make you feel great, then you don't have to do it. And so what if someone wants to put pressure on you and they don't respect you for it, then that's their problem. And they're, they're not, and if they love me, then they're, they're going to accept that's who I am. There will be things that I will do that I don't necessarily want to do because I know it really means something to someone, but I don't want to make myself feel anxious or anything anymore doing certain things and so I'm not going to do that anymore yeah I mean I tend to swing to the point now where I would rather do it might involve drinking but I'll do an activity rather than just go to a pub or a bar like I'll do an activity with my pals but then you might go to the pub after or like the classic is um kind of like brunches and stuff but we'll find ones with a theme or that they've got something going on so that you're actually going somewhere new, not just the same pub. You're actually having a laugh because there's something more memorable than just the same old monotonous stuff. Uh, or just, as I say, trying an activity, but then when you're in maybe London, but it's worth travelling there because you're actually doing something for a whole day yeah. rather than a couple of hours. And then if you drink, then you can have a drink after. If you're not, then you don't have to. And that kind of do occasions because if you just go to a pub you end up just drinking because there's not a lot else to do yeah. is there really and, that's and, it. and is- I think a lot of people as well like when they're going out if, if you are single and you're going out drinking or you're going out with people that are single sometimes a lot of people are then putting pressure on themselves to potentially meet someone when they're out as well and then like come on if, if you're smashed and you meet someone else out that's smashed like you're not actually probably gonna like it's very rare that that ends up becoming something but it's like how do you then almost date because that's another thing, like, years ago, dating was, was different, or meeting people was different, but nowadays, like, when you talk to people, and, you know, how do you date? Well, most of it's online, um, especially at this time of what's going on, and stuff, I guess, as well, for people, but it's, like, it's so different. I guess the people in their 20s now have had a totally different experience to what we would have had in our 20s, you know, 10 years ago, or whatever, however long ago it was. It's, like, the whole world has shifted and if you've been in a long-term relationship or anything in that period of time then you are then almost entering like you're going into this whole online realm of having to sort of date people online and get used to almost people sort of messaging you and then just disappearing off the planet of the earth or messaging you like standard dick pics like seems to be like a, a traditional thing that a lot of guys love to send I'm doesn't want one of them <laughs> but a lot of people it seems to be the normal thing to do and I'm like you know if, if you I was with someone a very long time so it's coming out of a relationship to then try and go into that entity and try and fit in with what's normal and you're like oh okay this is just the thing then and people will just message you and fall off the planet of the earth or people will be rude or you know, or like my friend, she went on a date, like I won't say her name and she got totally catfished and she was like proper traumatized. And she was like, how do you know if you're going out and you're even going to meet that person? Even one, if they're real, two, if they actually are who they say they are, three, they might've put a picture up from like 20 years ago, looking a certain way. And then you meet them, you're like, you definitely don't look. And you know, that's what we've had to come to accept is normal in society now. Or you still go out down the pubs and you sort of get smashed and hope to meet someone in that aspect. But it's like, you then have to, it's very overwhelming. And then you've then got the pressure of society and other people. They don't necessarily think about what they're saying, but they'll be like, you know, you're cracking on a bit now. Shouldn't you be settling down? And she'd have two or three kids by now, but it it doesn't, it's not, it's, it's different. Like most people I know that had kids in their twenties, you know, either they're still with their partners because they're kind of stuck. Some people generally are really, really happy and they wouldn't change it for the world. Or some people are just like, it just is what it is and I just have to live my life like this. And it's just like, well, and they're the people that are normally saying to me, oh, you should be like this or you should be settling down now or, you know, and it's almost like there's something wrong with you. Like you're broken. That it's like, 
I used to get that a lot. Like I know we've touched on this as well before, but first off, speed dating, um, speed dating, dating apps. <laughs> I've gone to new, new extreme. Um, dating apps, my opinion, not a fan. I definitely joined a couple when I was bored for the many years that I was single. What um, <laughs> what was the worst dating app that you used? I only used two. I think it was, is it Tinder and is it Buzz? That might be what it was called. I think I went on Tinder as a joke one evening, like, you know, when you have a few ones of your friends, like, come on, just have a swipe. The worst thing about it was that you tend to bump half the people you're swiping all around your block, all around your pub. You've seen them. Now it's just all. Like, if they've seen you and you haven't swiped them, oh, jeez. Like, now they know that you actually deliberately done that. The next time you I'll make you laugh. So I I did go on to Tinder back in December for a couple of months to try it, but I did, didn't like it. And then an XXX, it treated me like shit, like years and years, like when we're 19, um, I don't know if I've told you this, but like I used to have to go to bed with my makeup on and then wake up in the morning and reapply makeup because he liked, really liked me with makeup on. And I spent six, of my, six months... Yeah. Six months of my life going to bed with makeup on mascara, and we all know when you go to bed with mascara on, you end up with one giant eyelash. Like you know, they all clump together. And I'd go to bed with the makeup on. I'd wake up in the morning. I wouldn't even take the makeup off. I'd just reapply makeup over it, and then spend the rest of the day with this this person. And I thought that was acceptable behaviour. So, and anyway, when I was on Tinder, he he messaged me on on Instagram. I didn't even know he followed me. Was it? And he was like, yo, I swipe right, hurry up and, and swipe back. And I looked and I was like, you're a prick. Like, one, no, you're disgusting now. Like, I'm sorry if you're listening, but I don't really care. And two, I was like, what would make you think that I would not respect myself enough to sort of go back and accept that that was an okay relationship? Because it was fucking awful. And we wonder why we're insecure and stuff. And you've got someone going to you, mm, can you keep your makeup on please when we go to bed and, and you wake up with it. And then you think you've got the audacity because all these years later and you've now got a failed relationship and you think it's all right to get back in touch with me and almost go like, come on, I've swiped you. Let's give it like that. No, fuck off. I mean, I have, I did go through a phase where I see uh, an ex on there and I can happily say, and which way is the way you definitely get rid of left. So I think I, they tried it so that they definitely there could be no hesitation or any confusion that it might have thought did she mean right I can definitely guarantee I did that and I'm but sounds like so did you <laughs> but if I'd have got a message afterwards saying hey I'm waiting for you to swipe right I would have well that's just awkward been... not that I'm ever going to bump into him I don't think but you know if you did that's I don't like apps for that with like dating apps for that that and I hate small talk can't stand small talk you know when they're like if they, I've, I've had friends, guy friends that say, you know, if they don't quite open something funny, then no. It's like, where did your funny line come from? You know, if they if they liked you and then poked or whatever it was you could even do to get people's attention now, I'm like, well, you can say something too. But after about two lines of, hello, who are you? I'm really bored. I really bounce off people. So that was another thing for no apps. And yeah, and the famous, infamous dick pic. Or they ask you for a picture and you're like, that, that is not what this was. I know, it's, I just, it's such a... Yeah, guys, if you're listening, like, it's such a mood kit. Like, if you're talking to someone, you get a nice banner, and then they're like, go on, send us a pic. And I'm like, oh, you just totally ruined it. But I know some some people, you know, some people like that, but maybe I am just old and boring. I don't know. But I was just like, if you've got a bit of banner with someone, you're like, okay, okay. And then they go for the picture, and you're like, we're not, we, you know, we, we're totally not there, mate. Like, I personally was not about that life. So I was looking for maybe people that wanted a date and stuff like that or just chat and then see if that developed so straight away boring lines too cocky no go away and then I'd have about three of them and then I'm like just get rid of the app because you're really boring so for me I don't think that's what but then I have met people on holidays and stuff who are a couple and they met and it worked yeah, so, I, know. yeah I do know lots of people that it has worked but I just I think it's it's ruined by the people that assume that everybody else is out there. I mean, I remember one day getting a picture sent to me on Christmas Day, and it definitely wasn't something that was on my list or that I ever wished for. So it was the kind of baubles I didn't expect. But you know when you're like, <laughs> <laughs> where do these people come from? So that was a definite no from me. And I think that was the thing about dating apps for me that just didn't ever work. But 
as I say, they can work. But but I think I, I think as well, think, like if you're already in a little bit of a fucked up headspace, and then you do go on these apps, and you're not mentally prepared for the fact that people are going to message you, and then just completely fall off the planet of the earth. It t- you know it really can knock your confidence because you're like, well, hang on a minute. And if you're not used to being in that dating environment, then you've then got the dating app. You've already gone through a load of shit. You're trying to make yourself feel a bit better. Like, you know, we all we all do. Like, you want that sort of, that, that you know, I want to feel, I want to feel a bit loved. And then you then get people that will message you and then you'll reply back and then they'll just totally go. You know, the worst thing of it, and it didn't really bother me because I, maybe I just don't care enough because I don't know the person. I knew the person, obviously it would hurt me. But because you, you're a stranger, it doesn't really affect me because I don't know you've got no emotion to it. But I've got a lot of friends, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of women or men listening or something that have been through this. But then they start chatting to someone. If they don't want to send a picture, they've got ghost you and never come back. So then you might think, well, that's what I need to do then to get people's attention. So they start to think that they need to do. Or they're having a really great chat. People tell them all the things they want to hear. Then they ghost them. And then they're like, well, what did I do? And what did I do wrong? Was I not this? Was I not that? And I think that's the horrible thing about it. And I think they didn't even, and I tried to take them but they didn't know you. They were probably just bored and went on. They wanted to chat. Then they went out with their mates and they forgot. Mm-hmm. And their mates were there looking for anything. They And people can take apps very personally, like mm-hmm. a rejection. If you're in a really bad headspace, like putting a serious spin on it, like that can really dent yeah. you. So why I don't think... I would never advise like a new friend in a like who just come out of a relationship or in a bad place looking for someone to do that because they are very cutthroat at times. And if you're yeah. quite sensitive or not got the best kind of confidence at that time, I'm holding back name, um, that can be <laughs> that can <Thanks> for later. <laughs> <laughs> but that like, that can be a real big de- like, like I said, I've had friends that have really been affected by that. And they take it real, like really personally. And from that, res- like in that respect, I find it quite a bad thing because if you're out and about, people bounce off each other. They can get a real good vibe off you and stuff, yeah. And I think that's a little bit different. But people are just a bit bored for ten minutes, or they they think they're funny and they're having a good time, but then they just cut you. And it wasn't personal. It probably yeah. wasn't personal. And that's actually, one of my friends said it, uh, she was telling me something she said to her friend, and I thought it was really good advice, and that's why I think it's so important to talk about these sort of things, is she was like, it's not you, she was like, don't take it personally, she was like, people literally have other stuff going on in their lives, and like you said, they'll pick up the phone, and they'll be on the dating app for five, ten minutes, and they might not go on it for another week, and then you're, you might have then had a really good conversation with that person, maybe told them some stuff or, you know, let your guard down a little bit and then they just completely, it's almost like to you, you're like, oh, I've just been totally mugged off. But no, they've just got other shit going on and you've took it personally. But my friend basically said, she was like, just don't take nothing personally. And she's like, and it's almost like you think, right, this is the new way, and this is the new way to date, right? Dating apps mostly for a lot of people. And it's like, well, if that doesn't work, then I'm, I'm fucked. But no, that's just... It, it doesn't represent you as a person or them as a person. And it's like anything, isn't it? Everything's now at the kick of your fingers. You can get what, you know, you can get something delivered in two, well, back, you know, before this happened, you get something delivered in two hours from Amazon Prime if you had the two hour. And, you know, if you've got that mentality that you want something right now, you're not going to find a golden person in five minutes. And you're not necessarily going to find it in five weeks or ten weeks. You just... You just need to, and it's almost like they need like a a guide of what to expect mm-hmm. online dating nowadays. And and even like, I'm sure my dad won't mind me saying it, like my dad loves a bit of Tinder and he, he's met loads of women from it. And he's just like, you know, you have a really good conversation and they just like fucking disappear. And I'm just like, I know dad, but you know, it's the same sort of thing. And it's like, it doesn't matter what age you are unless you've sort of been brought up in that generation of, of I'm guessing from, like and maybe, I don't know how old they're allowed to go on certain apps from, but you've got, you, I don't know, oh, six, no. 16 would it be maybe? I don't know. Um, all he says is, are you old enough? Of course I am. Yeah, of course I am. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, you just don't know what to expect but when you're in that vulnerable situation if you have come out of a breakup and then you're potentially going to go online and start dating like 
I don't think it's a great idea, personally, because it it can literally fuck up your confidence and or you, or you can end up meeting someone that's so not right for you because you're not in that right headspace and yeah. you're potentially not well, healing yourself and you're just bouncing from one person to another and really what what I've learned personally and same for you is you need to look at what's going on with you and when you feel better about yourself then start thinking about maybe dating or you know I even tried, um, not tried, but one of my friends was like, oh, you know, let me recommend someone for, like, not recommend, but almost set you up on this. And I was like, oh, I don't really want to do that. And then, you know, when someone's like, come on, come on, it's a really nice guy. And there's like this, and I'm like, I, you know, you're not feeling it, but you almost feel bad then because then you're almost pressured into that situation. And there's nothing worse than someone going, I've, I've told my friends about you and they're really interested in meeting you. And you're like, oh, I'm not really interested. And then you kind of go along with it because you kind of feel like you have to and then you're now in this really weird situation where you're sort of gone out on a date with your mate's mate and you don't like don't like the friend you've got to not only tell the friend you don't like their friend but you might bump into them at some point so i mean i was i was never a dating fan and after i was single for like nearly eight years but that was a a preference as such as well because for a good three years i probably wasn't even looking i wasn't actively speaking if something had come my way I probably would have still gone by because I wanted to do things I wanted to find me again if you want to say you know what of a better phrase I guess and I think I just stopped looking I wasn't looking and you know obviously you go out if someone's good looking or your friend or a friend that you like but I wasn't I didn't I think a lot of people think that they have to be with somebody and if they break up well I've got to find someone again and I just never really had that frame of mind and I think taking away that pressure always helps as well yeah because obviously after a few years and another few years you're like um okay will it ever happen like will I ever actually sort of find it or will I want to invest in it because you might meet something actually it's just not even the right time I'm not even going to bother because it's gonna not work because I'm not even I want to do this this and this and that's not going to work in relationship and stuff but we also think you follow your gut a little bit yeah and Take away that pressure. If some, if suddenly a year down the line you felt you thought you were going to be single for a few years, it happened, then you, that's okay. But I just removed any pressure, and I felt like a dating meant I was looking for something. Yeah. Like you're you're deliberately going on there, whether it be because you you just people out there clearly just wanted to hook up, or whether you was looking for a person, and that put pressure on. Yeah, and like, that's what I didn't like about it because I was like, oh, I, I, it's almost like you're 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 putting this pressure on yourself to sort of. And you're like, God, I'm failing at this. And I'm like, what are you doing? You're you're clearly not in the right. But it's, it takes that moment of clarity to realise, actually, this is making me feel worse. So I need to put a stop to that and focus on myself and sort of grow in myself rather than worrying about what I should or shouldn't be doing. I mean, I've had people turn, like I said, I've had people turn around to me and go, oh, you know, you're not young anymore. I mean, you know, don't you want a family or don't you want this and I'm like fuck off like it's and at the end of the day like no offense like even in this situation now in lockdown I was like this is great all I have to worry about pretty much is making sure that I don't you know no offense to people having to homeschool and do it's you know it's hard but and all these people are telling me what I should and shouldn't be doing I'm like I'm happy in my little bubble you need yeah. to I, if I ask your opinion like you know do you think it's you know am I doing this that's fine I fully expect it but when people tell me what I should or shouldn't be feeling or should or shouldn't be doing and I haven't asked for that I think people need to learn to think about what they're saying before they do it because they don't realize you're already putting pressure on yourself you've yeah. then got external people almost, you almost feel like you're being looked down upon and then you're thinking what's wrong with me and then you then, you know, you can get into a really warped headspace because of what you believe society is meant to do. And then you've got people then telling you how you should and shouldn't be living. And you're like, well, what the hell? I mean, I used to get, I used to get a lot that, you know, oh, why are you still single? And, oh, but, you know, you need to meet someone soon because if you want babies and stuff like that. And it was just like, that's your problem, not mine. Like, that my age is your problem, not my problem. Yeah. Like, I I had come to terms with if I met someone, then I might have kids. If I wanted them, but if it meant that I 
didn't meet someone in time, whatever time, you know, is, because people can have them however long, then that would be something I was okay with as well because I wasn't going to force myself to just do something and choose somebody like, yep, you'll do. And I think you need to remember that people, that's just their opinion. Yeah. Nine times out of ten, we're in a relationship, in a marriage with their children and they that's the norm to most, like that's their yeah, norm. A lot, and that's, a, a lot of people are in that situation and they don't, they might not be happy, but then actually ultimately making that decision to, to separate from that person seems more of a stress so they'd rather just stay with that person and they're like well you know and then all of a sudden you're like 50 years old or something and then you've just spent how many years being unhappy in a certain way and you're living your life and you look back on it and you're like oh that, that's it like you just had to accept it and rather than thinking all right we've got a house together and maybe a mortgage and this and that and it's just easier you know we'll just we'll just live our lives separately I don't want to live like that. I I, I want to be. I know what I want. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And it's it's. I'm, but I can understand why it must be so overwhelming because if you are with someone and you you don't want to be with that person, but you're kind of stuck in financially and you've got maybe kids or maybe you've got I don't know even people with like pets and stuff like you're in this situation. So it's just you know what it's just easy. I'm just going to keep my head down. They can do what they want. I'm going to do what I want. I don't want to live like that. I want to be. Yeah. I want to be in a team. I want to be with with someone that makes me feel amazing and makes me feel good and like lifts me up. And you know, I don't want to just settle for something that's the norm and then settle down and get on my life or be with someone that makes me feel like shit. I don't. I don't want to live like that anymore. I agree. Like. As I say, I always used to just think, well, it's someone else's problem, not mine. Like, if I was upset that I was a certain way or not with someone, then that's my problem and I can do with that. But when I'm not, I was be like, I'll be damned if I was going to let someone else make me feel like I wasn't, you know, doing the right thing or I was too old to be single now. I should just settle down because I've been single eight years. And then it was like, are you, are you too fussy or are you, you know, oh yeah, because it's my problem. I'm fussy or can I just be that I'm all right actually. It was, it was none of them reasons. It was just just life, really. You might meet people and you think, no, they're lovely, not for me. They're probably great for someone else, not me. Or I was just quite happy doing my thing. And I think as soon as you learn to take other people's opinion if they want to give it, whether you ask for it or not, but then be okay with being like, I don't agree with that. Like, I'm quite okay with the choices I'm making. I think that lifts a whole weight off you as well because as long as you're content and happy with the choices you're making and you don't feel that there's that biological clock there and stuff, then that's okay. Don't let someone else make you feel that that's not okay because yeah. that's when and I, And I think as well, like, don't, like, like you said the other day, like, there's a difference between being alone and being lonely. And, yeah. like, that actually was quite a big statement because it's like, I guess a lot of people then end up being or staying with someone or making the wrong decisions because they are lonely but rather than actually looking at what's making them feel like that or doing something about it or getting a new hobby or doing something that makes them feel good about themselves, they'll just settle potentially or keep going back to something. You know, most most people will break up and then go back to an ex God knows how many times. Like, you, we've all done it. Like, we've all oh, put my hands up to it. Like, you know, you'll go backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and you're like, why do I keep doing that? Like, your brain knows that it, not gonna work but you it's that, sometimes you have that fear of like the like we've said before like you starting over especially if you live with them because yeah. that's a big thing that's having your whole the old the whole upheaval of everything so that can be really scary but i also think it's a lot better to make that one big scary move and struggle for a little bit while you find your roots again than to stay somewhere and it's a bit cliche, I suppose, but life's too short to be just doing that. Yeah. And you, it has such a knock-on effect of, like, your mental health and things like that, that it's just not the best thing to do. No. You should, it takes a big step to go away from something that's been your comfort zone, even though you're not really comfortable in there, so it's a bit ironic we do that. <laughs> like, I think the habit, of, and I said to you before, I think it's the habit yeah. of having someone have that security and having that home life and you think it's like you said like a bubble but once you break that you find it's not that hard to start a new bubble 
you know, whether it be on your own or whatever. But the more you do that, the more you, you become stronger and it becomes easier. Yeah. And I, but I think as well, you, like a lot of, I think a lot of it is one thing that I've learned is to talk about it and to if you're if you're feeling shit, it's okay to feel shit and it's okay. Like a lot of times I like to write stuff down. I love writing stuff down. Like, and I love then looking back on that particular time and that might've been a sad time or a really fucked up time in my life. But I love going back to that and going, I was there before and I know that I've gotten through that before. And it's like, it, it is really hard. Like I really feel for people if they've had like a serious breakup and they've never had that before because it's like that initial it's like a grief and a death, uh, the way I see it. Like, if you you have to let something go, and I know a death is extreme because someone was like, well, no, because you could still see that person again, but you might not want to. But it's like, it, it is part of grieving, and it's and it's letting it go. And it's also, because one of the things like, I was like, no, no one can see me cry. No one can see me be like this. So I was like, I almost would be like, if I did cry in front of people, I felt horrific for it. But I'm like, it's okay to be a human being. And it's, yeah. you know, I... I put a lot of pressure on myself. That's maybe because of my job, or whatever. I have to be that person that's in the front of the class and leading a group and being like this. And even as a trainer, like I have to pick people up and I have to fix them and make them feel better. But then I wouldn't leave any of that space or time for myself. And it was almost like if I then be upset, I'd, I'd be like, "Oh, you're pathetic." But no, you're not. Like you have to let it out and you have to express how you feel, whether it's listening to some really good music that makes you feel amazing, whether it's listening to some music that's going to make you cry and you have to let it out or going to the gym or doing some home workouts or going outdoors or being whatever suits you and makes your soul feel good, you need to do more of. Because if you don't do that and let these emotions out, it will fucking come and find you. Something else will trigger you, whether it's 10 years later, five years later, a year later, something will take you back to that space and you'll be like, why has that upset me so much? Or that bothered me? Because you haven't dealt with that shit from last time. And it's almost yeah, like... Yeah, like not, the not talking thing. Like, I'm a big talker and half the people that I would say that to would go, you didn't talk. But, like, in my old, old relationship, I guess, I never... I'd always be like, I'm one of the people, you're like, yeah, I'm good, you're all right. And I was yeah, very... You deflect it. I am like that. And that wasn't a fakeness, but I was just like, I've got this, you know, I can deal with this. And I wouldn't really talk about stuff because then maybe, I don't know, I thought people, I think there was a joke amongst close people to me. They'd be like, oh, you've got this fairy life and this happy life. And it's all going to be perfect and all this. So when stuff turned to shit, <laughs> that's what happened. I was probably a little bit, if I'm like in hindsight, I was a bit embarrassed yeah, to same, say that. Same. And like, I felt a bit like that people were going to think that I failed and I must have done something wrong. And the horrible thing was people did kind of for a while think, well, you were great, you were nice. And because I ended it, it's like, well, why? Come on, it can't be that bad and all these things. But because I never told anybody maybe how things were or what happened or how bad things had got for me at certain times, people would throw their opinions and it'd be anti-me and I must have done something wrong. What? Because I was, yeah, I had the same. But then I learned, actually, that it's none of their business. Yeah. And actually, close to me, you'd know that I wouldn't make certain decisions and rash changes to my life that big if it wasn't necessary. Yeah, I had, took, I had people to, coming up to me going, oh, did you do something to make them do that? And I was like, one, who the fuck are you? It's none of your business. And two, I'm like... Why would you even ask that question? Like, what is wrong with you as a person? And even if I did do something, who the hell are you? Unless you're like my best mate or... But my, even my best friends wouldn't ever... They're just... Your friends... Like, that's what I've learned as well is the people that picked me up in certain situations were gold. And it's letting those few people in. But then these other people would then come up to me and be like... But he's a really nice guy. Like, did you do something? And I was like, "You go date him." <laughs> yeah. And I don't, tell look, don't get me wrong. He's that you know. It's ex, there some some exes are really nice people, but I they must have way as you wouldn't have gone. I, I say that I'm like I wouldn't have gone there if they weren't a nice person. Do you know what I mean? Like, you don't need to slag them off after afterwards no. because offensive to me because that makes it look as if I have bad judgment and stuff. But things can just happen and. 
it doesn't really matter who was wrong or right ultimately. So when people ask you that, they're just there for the gossip, right? That's but, it. And it is gossip because, and that's what I did is I realised that there were certain people that were around me that were toxic. And it was almost like this awakening as well. So even though, like, when we, like, I broke up with my partner, it's like, there are so many people that I'm sort of staying connected with because I kind of feel like I have to. And I was like, yeah. this is my life. I don't have to worry about what you guys think or anything because it's none of your business. And it was almost yeah. like, but I think because it was almost like the whole thing was like public and the way everything came out was shit, like those people that do know, like everyone. And it was it was really hard. But at the end of the day, in a weird way, it made me wake up and go, mm, actually, you don't bring nothing to my life. You don't bring nothing to my life. You don't bring nothing to my life. I don't want you in my life anymore. And I feel like you're almost enjoying my failure yeah. which is sad because like misery loves company as we all know and it's it's almost like they feed off that kind of energy but I was like you know what actually I don't want that energy in my life and it's okay and people got offended they're like oh you don't message me anymore you don't and I'm like but I knew you know who's genuine and then you start to realize who's fishing and you're like you just want to know about my business because you probably got some shit in your life and it's going to make you feel better because you know there were certain things that, like you said it was almost like we things were sort of perfect and I it was in my bubble thinking everything was fine but you, you know you don't know what's going to come around the corner and you don't know what things have triggered certain things and certain behaviors and I am one to believe that like events and circumstances can change a person whether it's permanent or short term and it can have an effect short term and long term on something but at the end of the day if there's certain people that's making me feel worse about it either I had to take a break for them or I was really honest like with, like I love my dad and there were certain things he was like you need to do this you need to do that and that was his way I realized of him trying to make me feel better so that was another thing so I was like oh, he's trying to help me but I said to him look if you love me please let me get on with my stuff if I need your opinion on what to do about certain things I promise you I will call you first, but you need to let me figure out certain things on my own. And I don't need your input, but it's almost like they want to protect you and they want to, and, and, and you know, it's almost like I love my family, but I'm like, please give me space because I need to breathe. And when I'm ready to hear what you've got to say, and if I don't find it offensive or whatever, then I will entertain it. But if not, I don't want to know. And that's one thing I find with some people is they just tell you how you should be living your life. And I'm like, you sort and they, like I have I had a lot of people going because of their insecurities they're from at you so like um but do you feel this and but do you find that and it but you could tell it's their insecurities from you and then you start to doubt yourself and like well should I feel that or should I and that wasn't good either because you're already dealing with the emotions you do feel but again that's just people putting their weight on you so it goes back to you cutting out people that you think are toxic you can usually if you're kind of savvy in a moment and a bit of clarity you can tell them people a mile off because it's the questions they ask you to start they want all the details rather than just are you okay yeah and stuff like that so again i cut through them people i didn't need them around but you also find some really lovely people and they help you through and that goes back to the thing where you said just talking yeah. like i didn't talk and i just got on with it and that was fine but i've learned now i talk to my close friends not everybody but if something's a bit poop, I'll say it. And before, I might have been a bit embarrassed because, or a bit judged because everything looks all right from the outside. And you're just perky, happy Stacey. But it was all right to say it, actually. And that's, you feel better for it. And yeah. then you realise, going through that, or it's happened to that person, happened to this person. And then that kind of weight was lifted. And I think I learned that greatly, was talking was the better thing. And it was surprising to people that I didn't talk so much because I love talking. <laughs> but it was... It was always about, how are you? And I would ask that person. Yeah. And then I would put on this big, yeah, I'm great, how are you? Yeah. And then it's back at them because there wasn't a shed some of... People, some people can't handle it because then if you've gone from being that person, it's like, yeah, everything's fine. And then actually you're like, actually a load of shit's happened. I don't really know how to handle it. Then they're like, oh, you're always that person that's normally like, oh, everything's fine. Or they're like, oh, it's going to be all right. And you're like, actually, you're the wrong person for me to open up to because they can't handle it. And that's okay as well. Like, not everyone yeah. wants to... Some people just want to ask the question because it's being polite. But if you don't want the answer, don't ask the question. Or I've also learned that certain people will ask things even for gossip. People ask things because they don't actually care, but it's just a bit of conversation and then they want to talk about themselves. 
or yeah. people will generally be like are you okay like do you need to talk about it? and I'm like if I want to talk and that, that's the thing like I'm so lucky that the people that I've got in my life if I know if, if I do need to pick up the phone and stuff and we might not talk every day or some of my friends I do talk to like three four five six times a day like I know that if I need to talk and stuff now and I'm not afraid to do that but sometimes I think I don't want to talk about it. I want to sit in it as well. And then I want to think about it and I might want to sleep on it. And that's that's another thing. Or I write it down or I'll, I like to, to do certain things that will make me feel safe. So yeah. sometimes you don't want to talk. Sometimes your phone might be ringing. I think, I just don't want to talk to that person. And it's not me being a bitch, but it's just like, I just don't want to, you know, sometimes you just got to be in that emotion. And then that might pass in an hour. But then sometimes if you then... Or you might be feeling fine and then someone will ask you something and it will trigger you back. And then you'll come off the phone and you're like, oh, I actually feel horrendous. And I was actually having a really good day. But yeah. that also people tells... Drain you. Like, people can be, like, drained and you're in a good mood. And like, I think I'm, like, was selective with that as well. You know what people are going to be picker-uppers or drainers, right? So you put yourself around the people or you speak or you deliberately wouldn't talk to them people. Because if you're in a bit of a heavy headspace or not in the best, they would take every little bit of energy you had left and like bless them they probably don't even realize they're doing it half the time because that might just be there to be quiet or one thing that i did find quite hard and my friend actually got really angry at me and she was like amy you you know everyone else was almost because i'm that person a lot of, and I, I i love being that person if i can fix something or help someone with something and make them feel better i'm like i will 100 do that but if that then people know you're going through shit and then they dump all their shit on you then all of a sudden you're carrying around your shit, their shit, they've unloaded to you, they feel great, and you're like, Ugh. and then you're back down to like ground zero again, you're like, I'm sort of crawling through the mud. I would get that a lot, like, they know that you're talking, they go, you're right, and then you'd be actually like, no, I'm not actually, and then give why, and then they're like, oh yeah, but I, and then suddenly it's back on them, and then you think, well, I'm just not going to talk again. <laughs> like, yeah. And that would stop well, sometimes, because, they didn't really listen and then people you do learn actually it's it's nothing you did and like not everyone is like that yeah some people listen. and it is it is a bit selfish in a way like if i called a friend and i was going through something bad and they was and i listened i wouldn't then tell them my bad news yes. probably no because they don't it's uh you you know when it's appropriate and you might think actually that's not the person i but maybe that's why you had to call them that day and they've unloaded on you. But if they already know that you're going through a load of stuff and then they dump all their stuff on you and then you're like, well, hang on, I was phoning you to... Not that they, you know, not that you give to receive or whatever the saying is, but you you just want someone... And sometimes what I loved about, like, one of my friends is we just wouldn't even talk about the situation and we'd just go and do fun stuff and have a laugh and then, then she'd almost let me bring it up if I wanted to. Whereas other people keep probing and probing and probing and probing until you tell them and then you feel you might not have wanted to speak about it that day and all of a sudden you're going into... Uh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> better late than never. <laughs> Thinking is she talking about me? <laughs> yes, we are. Apparently yeah. you've got a massive penis. Well done. <laughs> it's going to beat me up, isn't it? <laughs> And he hasn't even like been nosy downstairs to see if I've spoken about him. Him hate us, him. He's gonna send a dick pic in a minute. You wait. <laughs> All right, back in your box. <laughs> oh, but yeah, near I... the end. I'm in the aim. <laughs> Pardon. Near the end of it now. Yeah, aim. we are near the end. So you've missed out on. Mike, you could have sent in your dick pic and we could have like shared it publicly, but obviously you've missed that opportunity now. But we had loads of entries, so we're going to pick the winner later. <laughs> but yeah, just, just on that note, I think for people that are going through anything like that and they're feeling like that, I think talk about it, journal, um, do some shit that you might not normally do or do things that are going to make you feel better and if you're ready to do the whole online dating thing or getting set up by someone or blah, 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 and you feel like you're actually ready, but if you're if you're new to that kind of world as well, I wouldn't even touch it because it's fucking horrible. I think it's horrible, but that's just... Maybe I'm old school. Still got Facebook, so I'm maybe... An old... I'd be the same. Uh, if I 
had to do it all over again, which hopefully I won't have to, I would still go with that. I would say that that's not the way, only because of reasons we specified it not being the best thing for you mentally, and it can de- it can do more harm than good. I think personally. Yeah. So yeah, thank you for the chat, Stace. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Nice to meet you, Mike. I think he's gone now. He's back on Call of Duty. <laughs> But I'll catch up with you later, babes. And thanks for tuning in, guys. Jim, you missed it. Mr. Official Jim. He's always okay. late. But, um, okay. yeah, I will catch up with you guys soon. And thanks, Dave. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye. What do you think? Did it make sense what we were talking about? No. No, it just sounded like a fucking phone conversation, to be honest with you. Yeah. That's what I want to see. It weren't informative, babe. I mean, no, I didn't want it to be, in, it I didn't want to be informative. So. But there was a lot of people I know that was commenting and stuff, and I was like, I know they're going through certain...